This is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about inflammation and leptin. Now, leptin, you might know as the hormone your body puts out when you've had enough to eat and says your fat cells are signaling you've had enough. Stop eating. And so it's meant to inhibit your appetite. Um, that works well and dandy most of the time when we are normal weight. Something curious happens though when we get inflamed. Now, there is an interaction with something called melanocyte-stimulating hormone, which is a hormone that has a strong effect on your appetite also. And when it's nice and high, when MSH is nice and high, leptin behaves properly. What happens when MSH gets low? Well, and when the leptin receptor gets damaged, we now know that, for example, in mold illness, which 25% of the population is susceptible to having, you lower MSH. And with that, you don't get an appetite feedback link. But you also have cytokines put out by the mold toxins that damage your leptin receptor. And the net effect is you get a bizarrely elevated leptin, way too high for the amount of the person being overweight. And that ends up with more inflammatory cytokines being put out. So you end up with a funny, vicious circle. Low MSH makes for damaged MS, uh, leptin receptor, makes for more inflammation, makes for more low MSH, makes for damaged leptin receptor. Round and round and round you go. How do you break that? Well, MSH is part of the pro-opio-melanocortin protein, and if you can pronounce that, you get an A. But it's the one protein in your hypothalamus that makes 11 different regulatory hormones that manage your pituitary gland. And they all get screwed up. Uh, MSH plays a role in pain control and day-night cycles. ACTH plays a role in day-night cycles and energy. And so what you want to do is do all the behaviors that manage your day-night cycle regularly. Go to bed at the same time, eat at the same time, get your body to making ketones by not eating for 12 hours a night, get regular exercise, manage stress, Let get some stress out of your life. Those are all lifestyle things you can do that will help improve your leptin. But what might help it the most is actually the fast mimicking diet, which forces you to turn on ketones by fasting. And you can look at that up by reading Longo's book, The Longevity Diet. But this gets back to the key concept I'm fascinated in, which is called the common soil hypothesis. that says metabolism and inflammation are curiously linked. Sometime way back in human evolution, they were the same source. And now as they've diverged, we find that every now and then they, get, they show their common link by having effects on each other. So we want to cut down on inflammation, but that's the way we cut down on uh, metab help of metabolism. Now, a curious link in all that, of course, is that the diabetes drug Actos, which has gotten a bit of a black eye for having side effects, curiously lowers your leptin and repairs the inflammatory cytokine MMP9. But it only happens if you're on an absolutely no amylose diet. What will work for me? Well, I'm doing a uh, fast mimicking diet once a month because I've got risk for diabetes in my family and I'm now on cycle number four. And you know, it's gotten to be easier. Every month I do it, it gets easier and easier. I'm going to measure my leptin in a couple more cycles. I'm looking forward to finding out what that means. This is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about the curious intersection of leptin, inflammation, and melanocyte-stimulating hormone. Thank mm -hmm. you.